Nobody likes to be called on their shit, especially when they feel like it's not really their shit. We had a writer of color. He and I got an argument. I did a bit uh, about uh, Herman Cain, where I adopted Herman Cain's accent, right? While Palenti attempts to get us to face the problem inside us, candidate Herman Cain offers real solutions to fictional issues. Don't try to pass a 2,700 page bill. You and I didn't have time to read it. We are too busy trying to live. Send our kids to school. Well, that's why I'm going to only allow small bills. Three pages. You don't have time to read that one over the dinner table. Bills will be three pages. If I am president, treaties will have to fit on the back of a cereal box. <laughs> From now on, the State of the Union address will be delivered in the form of a fortune cookie. I am Herman Cain, and I do not like to read. <laughs> we'll be right back. And to me, it's just his accent. But to that writer, it was it's a racist bit. And he called me out in a meeting with everybody around, and I got defensive. And got mad. He had done an impression of Herman Cain on the show, and I was on a field shoot, and so I didn't actually, I wasn't there for the process of, of it, but I saw it. I watched it that night from my hotel, and I remember the way he did the impression. It was a little weird. It was kind of like, it reminded me of like a kingfish type of a thing. Mm -hmm. Other people heard it like you know obviously it's on the show and so some people on fox news started attacking him and they were like oh look at john stewart the bastion of liberal thought being a racist and so he wanted to respond because i think they saw an opening and they just kept stabbing the knife in tell me what's your beef with john stewart well first of all john stewart is a comedian i understand that but when he starts to mock the three-page joke him being a comedian, he ought to have known that that was a joke. Mm -hmm. But he took it seriously, and then he started to stretch it out with all of the other stuff. Now, when he mocked me in the uh, dialogue of the old Amos and Andy. Dialect. Dialect of the old Amos and Andy. I yeah. think that was a bit much. But, you know, he's a comedian. I'm running for office. I'm a problem solver. I am Herman Cain, and I do not like to read. <laughs> you were uh, planning a remake of Amos and Andy? Why don't you show, do you want to show me doing all the voices for all the other people that we do? Do you want to see my New York voice? My Chinese guy voice? And I was the one black writer there. And so it was this thing where it's like, you know, when you're the one, you speak for whether you want to or not, you wind up speaking for everybody. And you speak for all the black people, you speak, but you also, at least for me, I always felt like I have to speak for all the minorities because there's nobody speaking for them necessarily if something seems questionable. And so with this, it was like, this is something that, yeah, it just hit me. And it was like, yeah, this made me uncomfortable. Maybe we just let this one die. And I got to the writer's meeting that morning. Uh, and I think eventually I was like, look, I got to be honest. And I just kind of spoke from my, you know, from my, my place. And I was just like, I got to be honest. When I heard it, I wasn't here when it all happened. I was in a hotel and I cringed a little bit. It, it was, it, it bothered me. And he got incredibly defensive. And I remember he, he was like, what are you trying to say? There's a tone in your voice. And I was like, there's no tone. And I was like, this just, it bothered me. And he was like, I was like, it sounded like Kingfish. And then he just kind of, he got upset and he stood up and he was just like, fuck off, I'm done with you. And he just started screaming that to me and he screamed it a few times and he was just like, fuck off, I'm done with you. And he stormed out and then I didn't know if I'd been fired. I represent my community and I represent my people and I try to represent them the best that I can. I got to be honest, if something seems questionable, because if not, then... I don't want to be in a position where I am being untrue, not just to myself, but to my culture, because that's exploitative. And that's, I'm just allowing, I'm allowing something to continue if I, if I'm just going to go along with it. And sadly, I think that's, you know, that's the burden that I think a lot of people have to have to have when you are the one that you, 
you represent something bigger than yourself, whether you want to or not. And it took me a long time to realize that the real issue was that we hired a person who is black and that because then they felt like they're carrying the weight of representation. Right. So they suddenly feel like I've got to be the speaker of a, ri and that puts a pressure on them that, so we think we're doing the right thing, but we're not doing it in the right way. Mm -hmm. And that was, those were hard lessons for me and they were humbling lessons and I was defensive about them. And I, I don't consider myself malevolent, but my ignorance of that dynamic had real consequences. Are you across the street? Maybe. <laughs> Well, you look like you're right across the street. Are, are you coming over? I'm thinking about it. I got some balls. I got some balls in the air. All right. You good? Yeah, I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'd love to see you. I think about it. My social media's blowing up. I hear you. Yeah.